How you going? Good bastards. Well, it's super early in the morning. The sun won't be up for another hour and a half. I want to answer a question from patron Justin McQuaid. He has a gun-shy dog. He's borrowed from his mate and it's gun-shy. He says, you let off a round and the thing runs 10 kilometres. Now, if you have a dog that's like that, that means the pre-work for hunting it was never done properly. And what is the pre-work? Right, you get your mate with a gun to stand maybe 200 metres away to begin with. You have your dog beside you there. He lets off a round. Dog gets lots of pat and lots of praise. Then you get your mate to come in at 100 metres. Let's off another round. Your dog's beside you. Lots of patting, lots of praising. Good dog, good dog. Make it closer, 50 metres, 25 metres, until your mate is standing right beside you, or he gives you the gun, better still, and you shoot. This gets the dog accustomed to the rounds going off in small doses, rather than just blasting it straight away beside it. That's how I've trained my dog, Poe, and I haven't done the work on my pups yet, because I don't shoot much stuff at the bale, but if I had a gun dog, that's the way I'd be doing it. But I do have that over my main dog, Poe. Right, these went in the washing machine, and it ain't the first bloody time that I've done it. So when the sun is up and we take Poe out for a walk, we will try and see if uh, they actually work. I don't believe they will, to answer that question. They are sealed, but I thought, I'm not going to risk taking them to a pig bailed up just to find they fail, so we'll try those. We'll let off a few rounds next to Poe to demonstrate how we do it when we're by ourselves and we don't have a mate to help us. Poe has never had a round shot over her at the bale because everything I've got close to she's grabbed and it's been given a knife. But I am going to do this, so uh, we'll set her up here and we'll only set her up at say 50 metres and see how she handles it. Good girl. Well that answers that question. Rounds in the washing machine don't go off. Right, we'll go and get a good round. That is a good one. Poe there. Good girl, Poe. Good girl. Good girl, Poe. Poe, come. Good girl. Good dog. Good girl. Oh, it's a good girl, eh? You know what that is? Look at the hole in the ground. Good dog. Tail's wagging. She's good. She thought that something had been shot because she has been around something getting shot. I think when uh, Kim Swan had her and Kim's partner possibly probably shot a few pigs over here so she's like looking around for where's the dead pig. But um, that there was at about oh, 35 metres away. So I'm going to do another one of her even closer now just to see how she reacts. But this is what you'd do, you just have your dog get closer and closer. You'd start off further away and you get closer. She's happy as though. And these guys heard it in the kennel and they're wagging their tails, that's a good sign. But you're a little bit shaky there, Pace. That's okay, mate. Good boy. Lots of positive reinforcement after that. Good dogs. Right, at this time with Poe right beside me. Good girl, Poe. Stay here. This time I've got Poe right beside me and I'm going to let another round off right at the same time. Good girl. How's she going to react? Good girl. Poe come. Good girl. That's a good dog. Good girl. That was loud, eh? Good girl. So it's real careful there to make sure that she was behind the blast. It's a hell of a blast off the 410. She's wagging her tail and she's, she's happy as. So with your own dog, remember start at a distance and just get closer and closer and closer.
today we're going to stick this here, which is a roof framed up over the top of the doorway. It's going to come out, I'm going to have a couple of poles down, I'm going to fix it to the top, I'm going to rivet it on, put some sealant in and have some poles down here. Keep the rain out of Data's doorway. These old nails are like bridge nails. You just pull out of this wood here with a bit of work. Use those. I don't know what you pay for these, but I'm into using second hand stuff. Straighten out the hammer, that'll be sweet. Good boy, Pace. He's coming. It's coming. It's coming, boy. We're gonna get it. See? What do you reckon? You know what that is? <laughs> and we can use this piece of wood too. If I put a squab like that in Pace's kennel, or Beast kennel, they'd chew it up in five minutes. But that's been in there for a week now, and Poe has looked after it, haven't you, Poe? Good kennel. A couple of tools I always carry in my toolbox. One is one of those, a jimmy bar, and the other one's a hammer, which I'd... There we go, down there. Got to have those two tools. Mate. No, you're not. Not helping at all. They can all be recycled, but I'll probably just do the big ones. I wonder how many houses, huts, chicken coops, fences, things have been built from the tailgate of a ute. Heaps. Rough enough. Nothing wrong with that bit of timber down there either. It's amazing what you can find around the farm. If she's a H3 or H4 or H5, she'd be in good nick. Let's see how bloody long is that. That's deep enough. We're going to take a break from digging that hole because it's getting bloody hot and my back's giving me assholes. So while I'm sitting here, I want to tell you a joke that a mate passed on to me. As a newly wed couple, and the wife falls pregnant, she wasn't supposed to fall pregnant because they've been using protection. Husband goes, how can this be so? She goes, I don't know, I don't know. So he goes to the doctor. He says, doctor, look, can you please cast some medical light on this problem? My wife has fallen pregnant and we use protection the whole time. We use the condom every time. And she's, she's up the duff, she's pregnant. Doctor goes, well, let me explain to you exactly what's going on here. I'll illustrate it in different terms that you might relate to. Yeah, right, eh? says the guy. Doctor says, once upon a time, there was a hunter. He always used to go into the bush with his rifle. Never left his rifle at home, because you never know when you might see a lion and you're out in the forest. Anyway, one day it was raining. He looked out his door, and he grabbed his umbrella instead of his rifle, went into the bush, and lo and behold, he came across a lion, naturally. Murphy's Law call it. So, he thought this thing's going to bloody kill me, and it was, it was coming towards him. So he grabbed his umbrella and he pointed at the lion, boom, and he shot it dead. And he was safe. The guy in the doctor's office goes, that can't be right, you can't shoot a bloody lion with an umbrella. Someone else must have shot that lion. The doctor says, you got it. Next patient, please. Right, we're going to dig another hole here, and I've done that, I might even tell you another joke. Number two hole dug. Righty hey, two holes down, and I said I'd tell you a wee joke before we carry on. So, there's this Kiwi couple, they've been married for bloody ever. 40 years of marriage, 40 years of fighting each other, and she's a real nagger. Darling, can you mow the lawns? Yes dear. Darling, can you chop down that tree? Yes dear. Darling, can you take the rubbish to the tip? Yes dear. 
and nag nag and she always was after an overseas holiday to Europe and she'd be asking darling let's go overseas to Europe it'd be so fantastic we've never been here before and he's like oh no, it's, it's a lot of bloody money. And I mean, his thinking, he could think, you know, he could buy a new fishing rod, new boat, new rifle, new pig dog, things that are useful. But finally, like the Chinese water torch of a dripping tap on your head, drip, 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 he gave in to it. Squeaky wheel gets the order. He goes, okay, 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 we're going to Europe. So they jump on a plane, they fly to Europe. 30 hours later, he's jet lagged to hell. They jump off the plane. The first thing she wants to do is go shopping and buy some shoes. So she drags him around to the shop and they buy some shoes. And then she wants to go and buy a skirt. She drags him there and she drags him here. And she drags him bloody everywhere. And he's like getting a headache and he just wants to go in a pub and drink a beer. And she's like looking at all these amazing things. She's having a great time and he's just getting pissed off. And eventually she says, would you like to go to an amusement park? And he thinks, well, that might be a bit of bloody fun. Might better sort of, you know, get away from these shops and go on a roller coaster or something exciting. So they arrive at this amusement park and there's different things. And she's, what's that only there? And he goes, well, that's a Ferris wheel. We've got those in New Zealand. He goes, well, what's that over there? And he goes, well, that's a roller coaster. And we do have those in New Zealand sometimes, but, you know, it's not a big something special. She goes, well, what's that over there? And he goes, well, that there's a, that's a wishing well. So they go on over the wishing well. She goes, well, what do you do with the wishing well? He goes, well, you stick some money down it, like you throw a coin down it, you make a wish and it comes true. She goes, really? He goes, I don't know. She goes, well, try it. So he stucks his in his back pocket and he pulls out a euro because that's what they got over there. Pucks it down the wishing well. And his wife peers over and looks right down and she falls down to the wishing well. And he goes, bugger me, I didn't know it really worked. Before I fix this in I've been putting a bit of water on just to see which way the lean's going. And I'm just bloody lucky. I've got bugger all this end but it is running down the scene, so that's enough. Just. Could have been a bit more but hey, I'm not going to dig those holes any deeper now. Up on the roof putting pot rivets in. Sweet as bro, sweet, not quite so sweet, that one there's good. Sheba right. Well, that's another job done and dusted. It'll keep the rain off and hopefully I've got enough fall there for the rain. I think it'll be sweet. The days are starting to get longer in New Zealand now. We're past the shortest day. It's nice. 4.30 in the afternoon, there's plenty of day left. And this is a part of the day I really enjoy. A cup of tea after my work's been done. Not that my work's actually ever done. I didn't get firewood done today, but that's another day tomorrow for that. I've got a couple of things to open. This came from Stu Driver. I'm hoping there's garlic inside because I've ran out of this garlic and here's the best garlic in the whole cosmos. And also I bought something, a uh, good bastard Justin in Australia made a very healthy donation to the Good Bastards Club and he said spend it as you see fit. So I bought myself something which I'll show you in a minute, something I've always wanted and there's still enough money left over to put juice in the truck for the boys in the weekend. Uh, before I do that though, I'll just fill you in pace. I would like to talk without you in my face. Well, where you go. Uh, fill you in very briefly uh, how my meeting today went with Wayne and his father. His father didn't want to know about it. Wayne said what he wanted to say. Because Wayne's a guy that's been having a lot of trouble when I've been helping him out. And said what he wanted to say to his dad and his old man just walked away. It was too hard for his old man to hear. He didn't say that Wayne was bullshitting, so in a way he kind of did validate it. You know, he didn't say that's not true. So Wayne had suffered quite a lot of physical abuse as a child, very young child too. His old man had some anger problems. So on that note, to any of you fathers out there that have done wrong by your children, and I've done wrong by mine, and I've talked to them about it myself. I talked to my son, oh, it must have been about, shit, I suppose, six years ago, and I said, is there anything I ever did that upset you? And we talked about it, and I said, I'm very sorry for that. And I've also done the same with my daughter. Because we make mistakes, we all do. You piss off, come on, where you go? We all make mistakes. Where you go, Pace, where you go, where you go? So, if your child ever comes up to you and confronts you with something, if it's uncomfortable or makes you feel like shit, just look at it, because it's possible you made a mistake. We all do. Right, moving along. Let's open this. And let's open it using this knife that was handmade by Simon, Simon Walker. 
in Auckland who makes beautiful knives. He made four of these only. This is the prototype. The other four have slightly thinner blades. This is three mil. He made them two mil to my my specifications. It's got a slight drop tip. Well, a reasonably drop tip. You can stick a pig with that. It's sharp enough too, and you can feel dress. Tips dropped enough to get under the guts. Uh, we've given them away to all to boys except there's one left. This year, one boy will be earning that knife plus the sheath. The whole lot's over four hundred dollars. So, very very good steel from Sweden. Very well made with a matte eye handle, and I love them. That's just a wee blurb for Simon Walker because he has been really good to the Good Barsley Club and keeping things coming our way. So thank you, Simon. <laughs> I can tell it's got garlic in it because I can smell it through here. Now, Stu is known as the number one Good Barsley. If you look on the Good Barsley's board, if you ever see me showing it to you, you will see his name is right at the very top. Long before YouTube was big for me and things were happening, Stu was sending me stuff. And there we have it in there. You Good Barsley. Oh, it smells good too, by crikey. Where you go, Pace, you're not having this, mate. A whole lot of garlic. Oh, jeez, man. I don't think I'm going to take it all out because it's already in a bag. Unless there's anything in the other end, which I don't think there is. No, it's all garlic. Thanks, mate. Love it. Just love it. You'll see that in my cooking. The size of these bulbs, man, they're huge. They're really massive. Look, at this is just one box. This one's actually starting to grow. Could put it in the garden and grow some of Stu's garlic. Look at that. The size of the that bulb. Just one. Better than anything in the shops. Okay. So Justin made a very uh, healthy donation to the Good Bastards Club. And I bought that. Something I have wanted for so long. You know, I'm going to make all sorts of mints. I'm going to try mince rabbit. I'm going to mince up power. Make patties that are like ground up. I'm going to mince up venison particularly venison so i can make patties you gonna come out mate uh, obviously i'm gonna mix up pork with fat and i might butcher a sheep in the next uh i don't know when when i can get one has anybody got one of those and does anybody use one my mum used to use one when i was a kid and i reckon it's a must have it's, you know the first one i've ever owned in my life but uh, always wanted one so when he gave me that uh Bit of money, I thought, well, bills are paid, rent's paid. And on that note, while I'm talking about rent and stuff, you guys, you know, I I think one thing for all people that rent places, a lot of people own their own homes in New Zealand, but those of you that rent, um, if you ever get behind with your rent, I'm saying this because I have done it before, just let your landlord know straight away and explain how you intend to, to pay it because landlords need to... Just hear that you're onto it. If you ignore that and don't say anything, you're going to upset your landlord and your relationship will turn to shit. So if you owe money to anybody anywhere, don't just ignore it because you don't want to think about it. Always say, listen, hey mate, I'm struggling right now, but I will have the rent coming up next week or something. And uh, you know, I've only ever once not been able to pay the rent in the 12 years I've been renting this place. And it was because, oh, long story, but anyway, I uh, did pay it and um, put my landlord at ease. I don't know why that just came into my head right now. I guess I was just thinking about, uh, yeah, I know what came into my head. I was thinking about a guy that wrote to me two days ago who's got real financial problems. And he's really got himself in the shit. But I said to him, you know, mate, really? It's only as bad as you make it. So long as you let all the people you owe the money to, that you're onto it and it's coming and you're going to work it out, that takes the pressure off, then you can work on it. Don't beat yourself up and don't give yourself a hard time. I, I honestly never worry about money problems, about bills and that. If I get behind with it, I always straight away let people know. I'm pretty good at keeping on top of it, but let people know and don't stress yourself. There's quite a few people that stress themselves over money and I just think it's bloody stupid. The big one is that people buy stuff they don't need, extend themselves, and then they end up owing money and getting themselves in the shit, don't they, Pace? You're best to live below your means. You don't need fuck all to be happy. What's this? Do -do 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 -do. It's not a trumpet anyway. I guess it, uh, does it go in here? Is it a, is that, I don't know. Someone tell me, does it go out of there? Maybe it does. Maybe it's making sausages. Maybe that comes off. Yeah? And that little thing goes on the end and it goes back on top of it and it comes out like making a sausage. Would that be right? I'm just making this up as I go along, I don't know. Oh, it fits on there, maybe I was right. Back of the line, eh? 
and then the meat comes out like a long, you know, and you put a sausage thing on the end of it. It's probably a book you explaining all that. Oh, yeah, here we go. The instructions, if all else fails, read the instructions. If you can get them out of the packet, and uh, I'm guessing, oh, it's just a wee thing on how to put the whole thing together. Wash thoroughly before use. Hand wash only, always dry the blade and cut it thoroughly. They must be made of high carbon steel, I guess. Once it's dry, mints can be sprayed with vegetable oil to prevent rusting. I wouldn't use vegetable oil, I'd use animal fat of some sort or lard. Because vegetable oil can still cause oxidation. Loosen the clamp and position the mincer at the end of a sturdy surface. I guess that goes without saying. Secure the mincer in place by tightening the screws underneath. It's, it's a no brainer, really, isn't it? Um, Unscrew the skewering ring and attach the blade of your choice. Makes sense. Place the chunks of meat into the funnel. Oh, where you go, Pace? Place chunks of meat into the funnel. Oh, the funnel's the top piece, okay, not that plastic funnel. Uh, turn handle clockwise, makes sense. To make sausages, unscrew the surface ring, attach flat side of the sausage making attachment. That it was, that's what it was. Then place uh, sausage skin over the nozzle. Well, that was all. Do not place your fingers in the funnel when using. Oh, for fuck's sakes. How dumb have we become? Of course you wouldn't. Handle with key and keep away from children. You know, I don't need to read any of that. Uh, not sounding like a wank or anything, but honestly, it's just all obvious stuff, isn't it? If you've made it this far through the video and you're still watching, well done. The day's nearly buggered here. Going to finish off with a bit of Q&A. But before I do, just uh, want to point out this product here. I'm not endorsing this. I don't get paid for it. It's just something I use for cleaning my gun. You can buy it, I suppose, anywhere online or Gun City, your local gun shop. But it will stop your rifle from jamming most of the time if you keep this uh, in the breech and your bolt around there. Also your shotgun. Uh, Mitchell the other day was out duck shooting with these... Uh, Gun jammed on the second duck. I think you use this stuff, don't you, Mitchell? But um, generally, I find it keeps everything running tickety boo. Okay. Tyshon808 says you should do a throwback Thursday and talk about crazy or cool hunting stories. What do you guys reckon? Rather than do just a normal snap vlog like I do every day off my camera, snap, 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 should I sit down and talk about old hunting stuff? Would that be interesting or not? Not a bad idea. Moving along, I'm just going down what happened today. Uh, Zachary Thompson. Hey, mate. Would love to join your Patreon, but I am a kid, so on a tight budget. Would love to go fishing or hunting with you one day. Mate, we can make that happen. In the meantime, if you are under 16 and money's tight, PM me on our Facebook page, Clay Talk Stories Facebook page, Explain to me the situation and I will send you some videos. And on that note, if you're in hospital, lying in a hospital bed, PM me and I'll send you a bunch of Patreon videos. If you have a terminal illness, be it cancer, leukemia, anything where you've only got a short time left, PM me and I will see you right. If you are just having a fucking horrible time in life and you're right down and shit's not happening, PM me and I will look after you. The GBC, the Good Bastard Club that is, they will understand. Even though they pay for those videos to be made, they will understand because they are a bunch of good bastards. Right, moving along. Clay, what do you do in the evenings when your day is over? I thought that was a good one. Well, I don't have a television. I haven't had television here for 17, in my life for 17 years because it takes up time and it's a distraction. And one thing, if you want to do anything in this life, there's one word I would say, and that is you need focus. So TV, Facebook, all those things that distract you all the time, stop you from focusing on what it is you want to do. And the things that I want to do is I want to take care of the people I love. I want to look after the people I love. I want to look after myself. I want to look after my dogs. I want to look after my, my YouTube channel. And I want to spend time to see my parents while they're still alive. I want to enjoy the nature, the outdoors, the hunting, the fishing, the outdoor cooking, the things I love, creating music, creating videos. I don't want distractions, and I'm easily distracted. You know, if I'm doing something on my Facebook page, like answering some questions, because I use that for the channel, and then something pops up, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting, how big is that elephant? Or, gee, is that really a shark? And hold on, I'm distracted. And it takes away my focus. And that's the reason I don't have a television. Moving along. Q&As are actually quite fun, aren't they? Clay, why don't you get yourself an oven? You're always cooking in the camp oven. That's a fair question. 
Well, uh, I grew up uh, in the bush. My dad was a ranger for the Parks Board back in the not very late 60s and the 70s. We lived, uh, there was no electricity. Well, that's not true. We had a diesel generator that used to make a little bit of electricity. My mum cooked on a coal range. It was an old uh, sort of fire, that you'd, like an oven, but a, with a fire. And she would put the camp oven on top of it sometimes. I grew up seeing that way being cooked. Then I worked different jobs in the bush as I got older. I was a culler for a while, like culling uh, pests. And I used to always take a small camp oven, it's a cast iron pot with a cast iron lid, to cook my food in the bush. And I got used to cooking that way. When I very first left home, when I was 15, and I lived under the Mottawaka Bridge, the very first bread I made was in a camp oven. There was a German woman and myself living under there, and it was her idea actually, and she got that, and we used that for everything. We'd bake bread in it, we'd uh, put a, like a rabbit in it, we'd cook. So if you can get your temperature right, it's just as good as a normal oven. Just as good. Well, it doesn't have the air going round, it doesn't have the rotisserie thing, and there are limitations, but for my thinking, it's not that I can't afford an oven, it's just that I like simplicity in my life. I find the more things that you have, the more complicated life becomes. I don't have a dishwasher here. A lot of people, you know, why don't you get a dishwasher? I don't need a dishwasher, you know. So, um, I hope that answers that question. I'm going to do one more and round this video off. I'll try and find one that's a real doozy one because I get some crackers. I get some uh, some funny ones, really I do. Uh, just going to pause for a while I find something cool. I couldn't really find anything that was funny or interesting, but I found one that's sort of interesting. It relates to a video I did of my daughter catching a rabbit and us cooking it, and Yvette Dow writes, Cruel bastard, don't play with it. I don't know if you can see that there or not. I don't know if that's showing up or not, but it's there, the comment. Anyway, um, it's a bloody dead rabbit that was caught in a snare. <laughs> She's saying, Cruel bastard, don't play with it. I don't know what people bloody think. That's like someone playing with a sausage or someone playing with a piece of steak. Calling it just because it's still got the fur on its dead. Do you think because it's got fur on it's still alive? I don't know. People are so far removed, aren't they, from the reality of our meats and what they eat. Anyway, yeah, uh, that was today's quick vlog. Snap vlog, whatever you want to call it, off the phone. I don't know how it's going to come out. I might put a wee bit of music over it just to make it interesting and uh, smack it online, you can watch it tomorrow. Good luck, be good, if you can't be good, be careful. See you later.